Right. Well, we are now talking about the historic tie-up between NICE Euronext and Deutsche Börse. Our next guest expects the deal to ultimately close, but says approval may take a bit longer than usual. Sachin Shah is a special situations merger arbitrage strategist. That's a lot of syllables. Like Capstone Global Markets, and he joins us now live here in the studio. Good to see you. I know you were Thank on you, this morning in a phone Happy interview. Happy Tuesday. <laughs> Happy Tuesday. Happy uh, day after Valentine's Day. Good to see you. Well, this is a big deal. I mean, I guess there were rumblings in the works. There's a lot of speculation on M&A just generally speaking for the markets this year. But Correct. tell me, what are your thoughts on this deal? Everyone seems to be saying it should pass no problem. Yes. Um, so, I mean, the bottom line here is the, the deal should ultimately close. Uh, they said on the conference call, you know, a lot of people are questioning, you know, how long it will take, uh, what regulatory approvals are needed. So they basically cited or outlined, generally speaking, uh, they had discussions with regulators. The regulators didn't give them uh, a thumbs up yet. Uh, so the process needs to transpire. I think in this situation, when you have politics involved, um, this is an icon at the end of the day. Um, and so this is, in my opinion, um, was anticipated in the context that of the Euro Next deal uh, that was missed by Deutsche Börse back in 2006, 2007. Right, and so, sort of Rito Franchione potentially coming back to get a deal yes. done that he couldn't get done yes. just a few years ago. Correct. Let's go back to the point you made about an icon here. Correct. What does this mean for for sort of the American financial markets? A lot of people saying, you know, this this is a merger of equals. Yet Deutsche Börse is taking sixty; they have a controlling stake in this, sixty percent. Yes. In this, so does it mean anything to no, the just, average American who's working in the financial markets? Yes. Just to be clear, it, they could say that. The terms don't indicate that, Lisa, okay? So at the end of the day, compensation or economic value to shareholders uh, and people that are watching this situation are not indicating 50-50, okay? So they could say whatever they want. Uh, so that's You're the first point. You're saying they, the company heads, can say Correct. whatever they want. The board could say whatever they want. The terms don't indicate 50-50. The board the, board breakdown do, does not. That's to whose favor are the terms? The to ter Deutsche Börse? Yes, it's the Deutsche Börse terms. So, you know, so they could... They could Pitch it wherever they want. That's the first point, which is less important in the context of the, your, your question about the general landscape for, for average shareholders, the people that are looking at these kind of situations. I've been a proponent in saying for, for the past year and change that we're in a global consolidation. So that consolidation doesn't necessarily just mean M&A. It means other things that companies and boards have to really extract value for shareholders. So this demonstrates the, the premium that we've seen here, the premium that we've seen in the, the TMX deal uh, with uh, LSE. We've seen a lot of other transactions. I've seen a lot of other transactions where the premium has not been significant. We've seen a lot of this consolidation. I believe we're going to continue to see consolidation. Is this a good deal for nice Euronext shareholders? I mean, the stock is down yes. about a buck twenty-five yes. at the moment. It's yes. come off its lows on the day. You think it's still a good deal? Yes, it, 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 it is a good deal, uh, Lisa, uh, preliminarily speaking in the context that, you know, Deutsche Borsch is down. This is a stock for stock transaction, right? And so the fact that they've done a stock for stock transaction, um, you know, it favors obviously Deutsche Borsch because they're the, the acquirer in this case, even though they may not say that, uh, or takeover, whatever phrases you want to use, um, they are, their shareholders are going to have a larger stake in this combined entity. The premise here is uh, there's three, uh, $400 million, 300 million euros, $400 million uh, in cost savings, okay, and 133 on the revenue side. So if you're looking at the situation, why are they doing this deal? It is because of the cost savings. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to pass this cost savings on to necessarily New York Stock Exchange shareholders, but they're basically saying we're doing a stock for stock transaction. If there is benefits in the future, which they obviously articulated, we'll them. we will all share with it proportionally. Let me ask you quickly, you have two, uh, you know, anytime you have two large companies merge or one acquired by the other like this, often it can be a little uncomfortable sort of transitionally for the two heads of the companies. Yes. So we have two different personalities. Duncan Niederauer, the uh, head of the NYSC, Euronext, yes. is going to be keeping his title, but it's hard to tell optically if he's reporting into Rito Francioni. Um, yeah, I, 
as far as kind of the org chart is concerned, Lisa, um, I, I don't focus too much on that. But the fact is that you know, Nina Hara is going to be CEO. Okay. So how this works out in the end, the org chart, what it looks like right now, may not be what it looks like 12 or 24 months down the road. Uh, I've seen similar kinds of transactions where um, you know you you could see a total opposite. It all depends on how uh, this deal is completed and what the outlook is going forward. And that is what, you know, so at the end of the day, it's accountability, right? So if things really materialize, they're able to, you know, execute on the cost side, execute on the revenue side, on the synergies, as well as execute the complete transaction, that chairman is going to get the benefit. He's not going to be asked to step down. And that is, that is, that is something that you would look down the road relative to what, now, what is happening right now. A lot of people, including on the people on the conference calls, focusing on what the name is. In my opinion, it's somewhat irrelevant. Right, because the name at, of the new company. Yes. What are you getting as a shareholder? Right. That's what should matter. And your question previously, are we going to see similar types of transaction and what this matters for the, uh, uh, a person on, on Wall Street as well as Main Street? You're going to see more of these transactions, and they, could, they should focus not on the name, but the economic value that they could extract right. and what that means to them. Sachin, thank you so much for breaking that down for us. Your last point there is absolutely right. It's one thing everyone agrees on is that we're going to see more of this type of activity. All right, Sachin Shah, thanks for coming in the studio thank you, Lisa. today. Capstone Global Markets.